So, in this session we are going to study reflection of light by spherical surfaces, spherical mirrors, concave mirror, convex mirror. So, these spherical mirrors are formed by a glass shell, this is a glass shell and if I cut a small portion from here, so this is this portion and if I silver it, silver it then it becomes concave mirror. If I silver it this way, suppose I silver it this way and put it like this, then it will become convex mirror. So, we have two types of here spherical mirrors, concave, convex. So, name concave, cave means cave. So, that means on the reflecting side, this is the reflecting side, this is opaque side, this is silvered side. So, this is the useful side of a plane mirror, uh, spherical mirror, curved mirror. So, concave means this cave type nature, cave, when we enter a cave, cave is there. So, cave type is there. So, with this. Here, when we go from here, we would not find such a shape. So, we say this is a convex mirror and this is a concave mirror. So, this is the name given. Now, this mirror, now this is the, this point is called center of curvature. Now, this point is called center of curvature. So, for this mirror center of curvature. So, what is center of curvature? So, center of curvature is the center of that sphere whose part is that mirror. So, its center of curvature is here, its center of curvature will be this side. So, center of curvature is the center of the part of the sphere of which part is that mirror. Now, this point here, this point is called pole, this point is called pole, this pole. Now, another term we use aperture or diameter of a mirror. So, this is called aperture, aperture or diameter of the mirror. So, these are the standard terminologies, center of curvature, pole, diameter or aperture, this is concave mirror, this is convex mirror. And the line joining the pole and this center of curvature, this line will be called principal axis. This is principal axis. This is the standard terminologies we use while we talk about spherical surfaces. Now, let us see that how image is formed due to a spherical surface that is the mirror formula. So, now let us see how image is formed by a spherical mirror. We will derive the mirror formula. Now, consider a mirror, spherical mirror this is the principal axis and this is the center of curvature of this mirror. Silvered part is here, this is a spherical mirror and consider a point object O. This is a ray which after reflection meets the principal axis and thus forms a an image I this is S, if I drop a perpendicular, then this is called P. This angle is called I and this angle is called R. Let this angle be theta, this be theta 2 and this be phi. Now, consider a paraxial ray OS, consider a paraxial ray OS from the point object, point object O, which after 
reflection from the spherical mirror meets the principal axis principal axis at i forming a paraxial image so i have used this paraxial word here which is highly technical word paraxial image so paraxial image paraxial rays this is very important point paraxial rays rays are very close to the principal axis i in other words they subtend very small angle small angle with the principal axis so in my figure theta 1 phi theta 2 are very small this is very small because we are considering only paraxial rays so this i will be called a paraxial image so this is very important that we are going to study the mirror formula for which we will calculate the position of paraxial image so only paraxial rays are going to be accounted for now you see here from law of reflection angle i is equal to angle r this is i and this is r now in this triangle s o c this phi is the external angle which is the sum of theta 1 and i so you see this phi is the sum of i plus theta 1 so i will be simply written as phi minus theta 1 now you see this triangle s c i this is theta 2 external angle this is theta 2 that can be written as phi plus r phi plus r implies we can write r as theta 2 minus phi so we will write r as theta 2 minus phi these are small angles paraxial angles paraxial ray forms paraxial angles which are very small so we can write theta 1 bringing this side as 2 phi now these angles are so small that tan theta 1 we can write theta 1 as tan theta 1 theta 2 as tan theta 2 phi as tan phi now suppose i call this distance as x this distance as y and this is r then we can write tan theta h sp by r plus sorry sp by x plus sp by y is equal to 2 into sp by r here sp 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 cancels so 1 by x plus 1 by is 2 by r this is the mirror formula now i have derived this formula for you see this is only concave mirror but i want to generalize this formula for convex mirror so we have to introduce a proper sign convention here so we are now going to use a sign convention i will introduce a sign convention which we will be using throughout the geometrical optics and this sign convention will be called coordinate sign convention so now let us introduce coordinate sign convention so in this sign convention number one point is that the object object should be placed left side of the 
रिफ्लेक्टिंग और रिफ्रैक्टिंग एलिमेंट सो वी विल प्लेस द ऑब्जेक्ट दिस वे इफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इज दिस वे वी विल इन्वर्ट द सिचुएशन एंड विल मेक श्योर दैट द ऑब्जेक्ट शुड बी दिस वे सेकेंड ऑल द डिस्टेंसेस आर मेजर्ड फ्रॉम द पोल फॉर ए मिरर इट इज पोल फॉर सम लेंस ऑप्टिकल एंड सिंपली वी राइट पोल मेजर्ड फ्रॉम द पोल एज ओरिजिन ऑल द डिस्टेंसेज आर मेजर्ड फ्रॉम द पोल टेकन टेकन एज द ओरिजिन थर्ड पॉइंट डिस्टेंसेस डिस्टेंसेस मेजर्ड लेफ्ट ऑफ द पोल आर निगेटिव एंड राइट ऑफ द पोल आर पॉजिटिव फोर्थ ऑप्शन the distances measured above principal axis principal axis are positive and below principal axis आर निगेटिव दीज आर द बेसिक फोर साइन कन्वेंशन वी विल यूजिंग नाउ इन माई दिस केस वी हैव डेराइव द रिजल्ट वन बाई एक्स प्लस वन बाई इज इक्वल टू टू बाई आर नाउ वी इंट्रोड्यूस साइन कन्वेंशन यूजिंग कॉर्डिनेट साइन कन्वेंशन वी विल यूज द लेटर यू टू डी नॉट ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस सो ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस वी हैव यूज यू दिस डिस्टें ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस इज लाइंग दिस वे दिस इज द ओरिजिन सो इट इज माइनस एक्स वी विल यूज दिस यू लेटर फॉर denoting the object distance now image image distance is represented by v the image is formed left of pole so we have minus y here and the radius of curvature radius of curvature will be r that will be here again minus r Thus we get a formula. Thus minus one by u minus one by v is equal to two minus two by r. Implies one by v plus one by u is two by r, which is the mirror formula. Now here we introduce a term called. focus now when when the object is at infinity infinity then the place where the image is formed will be called focus so if u is infinity then v is focus so 1 by v is focus plus 1 by infinity is equal to 2 by r implies f is equal to r by 2 so where is the focus the focus is at r by 2 from the pole so the formula becomes 1 by v plus 1 by u 
r will be simply 2 by r is 1 by f. This is the standard formula. This is called mirror formula that we are going to use universally. This is this is mirrors mirror formula. This is mirror formula. Now, let us derive in an another way the mirror formula where we are going to use plane geometry. This is my paraxial ray which after reflection forms an image i. So, you see this is i and this is r. So, these two are angles are equal i is equal to r. So, in this triangle in the triangle O S I the S C is the angle bisector S C is the angle bisector. So, we have a theorem in geometrical optics that in a triangle if there is an angle bisector the ratio of these two sides will be the ratio of this. So, we can write O S O S by S i O S by S i this is O S by S i is equal to O C O C by C i by C i. Now, you see this angle is so small for paraxial rays O S is equal to x, O s is equal to O p that is equal to x and S i you see this angle is very small. The order of this paraxial angle is 1 degree, 1 degree is also very large, 1 degree order. So, this is a highly exaggerated diagram, my order of this angle is 1. So, th when this is nearly 1 degree this is equal to this. So, s S i is nearly equal to y. Now, let us write O s, O s as x, S i, S i as y. What is O c? O c is total, this distance is r, this is r. So, x minus r, x minus r and C i C i is r minus y, r minus y. So, simply x r minus x y cross multiply is x y minus r y. So, this r x r plus y r is equal to 2 x y. Now, if I divide by x y, divide by x y and r bring that side. So, x r by x y plus y r by x y is equal to 2. So, here y cancels, here x cancels. So, if I bring I, y this side, so here y cancels and here, so here it is 1 by x plus 1 by y, we got 2 i r. Using again sign convention, using sign convention, which we have already discussed. 1 by v plus 1 by u, this is v is equal to 2 by r. So, you see here by using plane geometry, we have easily proved and we have justified that we are doing really geometrical optics. Now, let us see the transverse or axial magnification caused by a spherical mirror. Suppose, this is a mirror, spherical mirror and we have an object like this. This is the object, this is A, B. A, B denotes the object. Any ray which goes here gets reflected and an image is formed at A dash, B dash. This angle and this angle are equal because angle of incidence is equal to angle of refraction, reflection. This is right angle and so this is also right angle. So, these two angles are also equal. So, automatically this angle becomes equal. So, triangle, triangle A, B, 
this is P pole ABP is similar to triangles A dash B dash and P. So, this these two triangles become equiangular. So, we can write thus from similarity of triangles. So, A dash B dash this by this becomes B dash P B dash P by B P. Now, we define transverse magnification. Now, we define we define transverse magnification as the ratio of ratio of the image image size size transverse image size transverse sometimes we call this image height so image size means here the size should be normal to the size means distance the length this distance normal to this principal axis so image size to the object size transverse this is how defined we use a letter small m to denote this transverse magnification axial magnification m as suppose h2 h2 by h1 suppose i call this as h2 and this is h1 so h2 by h1 now using sign convention you see this distance h2 is actually down measured along this direction will be negative above this will be positive so i will write this as minus a dash b dash by ab now again from this a dash b dash by a b is minus b dash p by b p now b dash p is the image distance which we have selected v we have reserved the letter v for image distance and b p is the object distance u so magnification transverse magnification is minus u v by u for a spherical mirror this is the expression for the transverse magnification. Transverse or lateral magnification produced by a spherical mirror. This is my spherical mirror and A B is the object. The ray from A is incident on the pole and after reflection it forms an image A dash B dash. So, this angle is equal to this. Now, this is 90 degree the object is standing normal to the principal axis so its image is formed at a dash b dash so these two triangles triangle a b and this is p a b and p is similar to triangle a dash b dash and p because they are equiangular so they are similar so, we can write hence, hence we can write A dash B dash this by A B is equal to B dash P, B dash P by B P. This by this is equal to this by this side. So, these two triangles are similar. So, we can write. Now, we define transverse or lateral magnification we define we define transverse or lateral magnification as the ratio of the image size that is transverse image size to the object size that is in transverse the object or the image that object must be transverse in this transverse direction. So, we call suppose I say this is h 2 image height height or size anything h 2 by h 1 we will define this as h 2 by h 1. Now, since 
the distance is measured in downward direction below the principal axis is negative distances above. So, we will write h 2 this as image height as minus a dash b dash and the above distance as a b. So, minus now a dash b dash is equal to b dash p is equal to b dash p by b p. Now, in our sign convention b dash p is the image distance that is equal to minus v. This distance here is minus v and this distance b p h minus u. So, finally, I got minus v by u. So, thus we have a formula for transverse or lateral magnification by a spherical mirror as minus v by u. This is very important. Now, consider longitudinal or axial magnification caused by a spherical mirror. Now, this is our spherical mirror and this is the principal axis. Now, my object previously was like this, but now this time the object is like this. That means, my object has a extended length along the principal axis. Now, suppose this distance is given as u and suppose its image is formed here such that this distance is v. Then I will call this as d u a change in u and this is a change in v. Here we should keep in mind that this d u is very small compared to the distance u. So, that if you measure u from this end, this end or this end all will be same. That d u is so small that its distance measured from here, here, here can be neglected. So, this d u is small compared to u. If we have an object whose extent is large compared over this distances involved then we cannot use the formula which we are going to derive. This is the limitation of our formula. We will see that if that extent is large then what we will do later on. Now, using using mirror formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is 1 by f taking the differential, taking the differential of both sides, both sides. So, you see if I take the differential, it will be I will get 1 by minus 1 by v square dv minus 1 by u square du. This f is constant, so it is 0. So, we have dv is equal to minus v square by u square du. The minus indicates that you see if you move this way, the image is going to come this way. If the distance u is decreasing, v will increase. So, anyway, we are required, we just require dv, the modulus of dv and du. Now, we define, we define the longitudinal longitudinal or axial magnification as the ratio of as the ratio of the image length to the object length. Length means along the principal axis that length. So, we reserve the capital letter to denote longitudinal or axial magnification small m for transverse or lateral magnification. Here m is equal to image length by object length that is modulus of d v by modulus of d u that will be equal to 
v square by u square that is m square also we can write. So, we got the formula for this magnification as v square by u square is equal to m square. This is our longitudinal or axial magnification. So, now let us see the image formation by a spherical concave mirror for different object positions. So, first of all object is at infinity. Now, when the object is at infinity, you see this, this is the concave mirror, this is the principal axis. So, if already we have seen that if the object is at infinity, the image is formed at the focus. This is the definition of focus that if the object is at infinity, the place where the image is formed will be called focus. So, what is focus? So, here we should keep in mind that these rays are parallel to the principal axis, so they meet at the focus. But now, if the object is at infinity, this is the principal axis. So, the object is at infinity, the object is at infinity. The rays coming are parallel, but this time the rays are not parallel to the principal axis. So, if the rays are parallel, but not parallel to the principal axis, this is the focus, then they will meet somewhere at the focal plane. So, this is very important point, rays, so image, so rays parallel, parallel to the principal axis to the principal axis meets at the focus. So, this is the location where image is formed, but rays that are parallel, parallel, but not parallel to parallel to the principal axis axis meets at the focal plane. So, the image is formed here, the image is formed here, that image is on the focal plane not at the focus. So, its distance will be all also called the focus. So, the distance of image from the mirror is equal to f, but the image will be formed on the focal plane. This is very, very important point. This point will be used in ray tracing. Now, let us see when the object is beyond center of curvature. So, this is the plane mirror, sorry, spherical mirror and this is the principal axis, this is our C and this is F. So, this is the object here. Any ray going parallel to this passes through the focus, passes through the focus and any ray, I can take any two rays from here. Suppose I take passing through the focus itself this ray, then this ray goes like this, thereby forming an image this. This is the image, this is the object. So, the image you see is formed in between C and F. The image is real, this is real image. The image formed, the image formed is real inverted demagnified demagnified this is real this is inverted demagnified and in between 
C and F, the center of curvature and the focus. So, if the object is beyond C, the image is formed between C and F, that is a small image, demagnified, diminished image that will be inverted. Now, let us take when the object is at the center of curvature. So, when the object is at center of curvature, this is the center of curvature, this is C and this is our F. So, when the object is here, suppose a ray, parallel ray goes like this. So, it passes through the focus and we can again use this ray also. So, it has to pass through here the ray passes like this. So, when this ray after passing through focus becomes parallel and so the image is formed here. This is the image and this is the object, object position, image position. So, the image, the image is real, inverted and formed on the sin on the center of curvature. The magnification is one, the image is of the same size, i.e., here magnification is equal to minus one, it is inverted. So, minus of same size at one. Now, suppose if on the center of curvature we have a point object, then its image is going to coincide with itself. So, image will be formed on itself. So, it is a very important point which is used in problem solving. So, whenever the object is at the center of curvature, then its image coincides with itself. It is a point object. Now, next we will see the object between center and center of curvature and focus. Object is between center of curvature and focus. So, this is my spherical mirror and this is the principal axis. Let us take this as C and this is as F. So, I had an object here. So, let us suppose any ray parallel to this has to pass through focus and any ray like this gets reflected and passes like this. So, the image is formed here. This is the object and this is the image. The image we see is formed beyond C. The image, the image is real inverted magnified and formed beyond C. The image is inverted beyond C and it is highly magnified. Now, let us see if the object is at the focus, where is the image formed? This is the spherical mirror, concave mirror and this is my focus F, this is C. So, if this is the object, any ray parallel has to pass through the focus. If I take any other ray, suppose I take this ray, then this ray also pass, this these two rays are parallel. So, you see if the according to principle of reversibility of light, if these rays are parallel and obliquely incident, they meet at the focal plane. That means, a ray will go parallel, any ray. If I take this ray, so if a ray is incident like this, which normal incidence, so it will again go. So, these are parallels to infinity. So, when the object is at the focus, the image is formed at infinity. If this is a point object, the rays will parallel. If the object is a point object at the focus, 
so any ray going from here will emerge parallel to the principal axis but if we have an extended object this point then the image will be formed at infinity and this many large now let us take the case when the object is between focus and pole so the object is here now this is the concave mirror this is the focus and we have an object here suppose a ray is incident like this then it will get reflected and it seems that it is coming from this direction suppose i had a parallel ray then it will get reflected and it will pass through the focus so you see these two rays are now diverging so they seems to be coming from this so you will get a virtual image all the images previously we have seen are real images now this image is a virtual image this is the object and this is image this is a virtual image it's a magnified virtual image formed on the other side the image image formed is virtual magnified magnified erect magnification is positive erect and formed on the other side of the mirror now in all the previous examples we have seen the object position was real really there was an object there but now let us take an example if the object is itself virtual that means if this is the mirror and virtual object means the rays are converging so a converging rays means this is virtual object and they may form a real image here so this is what cases this is the case we are going to take up my object is a virtual object which is lying this side and my image presently it is real image but whether it is again a virtual image real image or what we have to see so if my object is virtual object then what are the what type of image will be formed let us take up this case now using using mirror formula mirror formula 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f implies 1 by v is equal to 1 by f minus 1 by u so 1 by v will become u minus f by f into u implies v is equal to f u by u minus f this is and magnification is minus v by u that is minus v means f u by u minus f by u by u means u will get cancelled so we have minus f by u minus f this is the magnification so we have now expression for v as f u by u minus f we will first see this now for this concave mirror the focal length lies this side that is a negative quantity so this is negative what about u here object distance is positive for virtual objects so here u is positive upon what is u he, here positive object distance positive minus a focal length for concave mirror is is negative now this minus into positive is negative quantity by minus minus positive by a positive quantity which is a negative quantity that means for all virtual object position we will always get a image on this side negative side that is real side so thus thus the image 
ऑफ ए वर्चुअल ऑब्जेक्ट इज ऑलवेज रियल इन ए स्फेरिकल कॉन्केव मिरर now let us see what happens to the magnification now magnification is given by minus f by u minus f minus now f f is here negative by now u u is itself the positive positive quantity and minus of f minus of f minus of f means it will again become a positive quantity so this minus minus plus and you see this is f this is f and somewhat greater than f so it's a fraction so m is going to be a fraction and positive is equal to positive and less than 1 that means magnification will be greater than 0 and less than 1 this is the magnification that means you will get an erect demagnified real image by a concave mirror this is this point is very important and in iit or any exam they may ask in multiple options in match the followings the locations of the images if the object is virtual now let us summarize all the previous discussions of the image formation for various object positions by uv graph so the graph for uv is so the equation 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f so for a concave mirror focal length is negative so now suppose i plot here if i this is minus f and this is also minus f so now you see here if the object is at infinity you see here this is my mirror if the object is at infinity very large distance the image is formed at focus that means u is minus infinity when we are here at minus infinity the image is formed at minus f that means my graph starts from here somewhere next as i approach the center of curvature if i approach the center of curvature that is 2f then the image and when i am here the image is between c and f and when i approach c the image shifts here so when i am here my image is here so so nearly you see here it is nearly if it is mi minus 2f here you will get minus 2f that means the image coincides here and as we go closer to c you see when this am closer to 2f my image becomes this way if i go this way the image shifts here so you see when my object distance is coming closer to 2f my image distance falls here so this this will go this side so you see here this line which is from minus f parallel to y axis becomes asymptote of this curve so in this case here you see entire from this to this the image is real the object is real for real object we have a real image now once i am close to f if i am at focus this is minus f this distance is negative then the image is formed at infinity minus infinity this way when we are at here the image is formed infinity so that is called minus infinity now once i am going closer to f if i am going away from f between focus and pole then suddenly the image goes this side now you see here 
if this is focus and we are going towards the pole, the image goes like this. So, when we reach pole, if I am here now, we will get a magnified image here now and so you see here it will go to 0. This, this is a curve going to 0. So, this is the asymptotes and this goes to 0 here. Now, once we are in this u becomes positive, u becomes positive that means my object is here. That means if my object is here, that means we are talking about virtual. So, this side, this whole entire these two coordinates, the image is here for these locations, object is object is real and image is also real. So, this part up to here part, this part. In this part, object, object is here real and the image is virtual, image. Only in this part, you see V is positive, positive means that side. The image is virtual and the object is real. But this time, here for the entire portion, for this whole entire portion, we have virtual object because u is positive means this side. So, we have already seen that if the object is virtual, then we will get a demagnified image, erect image. So, this curve will go on like this. So, when this u becomes infinity, then the image is formed at minus f. So, this is how the u varies with v for a spherical concave mirror. So, now let us see the magnification transverse magnification versus object graph. So, here m is transverse magnification and u is object distance, object distance. Now, when the object is at infinity, then you see here, this is, let us draw an axis parallel to m axis passing from minus f. So, when object is at a large distance, so this graph is something like this. When the object is at large distance, we have some magnification and as you go on, the magnification here increases until we, at, we are at focus. So, when I am at minus 2 f, that means if the object is placed at center of curvature, then the magnification we get is minus 1. Before that, this is for all real positions, real positions, positions of object. So, as we approach the mirror, the magnification here is increasing. When we are at f, it has increased to minus 1 and when we go beyond this is we are approaching that is between focus and center of curvature then magnification is more than 1 and so you see this is inverted image. So, this is in all these cases the image is inverted so minus and here more than 1. Once we are at focus the image the, ma the magnification is infinitely large. Now, when we are inside the focus between pole and focus then the magnification goes like this. Now, this is plus 1. So, when we are at the pole, we get the magnification as plus 1 and thereafter the image, the object, here object is, object is virtual and the image is real. So, we have seen that for virtual object position, 
the magnification is positive the image is erect and so the magnification here goes to 0 when u becomes positively. So, this is how the magnification varies with object position for concave mirror.